Right, still we have not entered into Nexus 1000. Understanding Nexus 1000 configuration, installation and all the stuff. Uh, we are still in under understanding VMware. Here we have very important foundation towards VMware. Now what we have is, uh, what VMware provides is an extended access layer. It provides an extended access layer. Through VMware what we have is, we have an extended access layer. What it means we already know. So we have a physical box and we have many virtual boxes. Usually access layer is only up to this level, this physical level. Now we have extended down to this VM level. Now what are the other things that we understand from this diagram is um, from this VM world we are able to uh, connect to storage devices this is MDS is nothing but um, a switch to talk to a storage box and we are connected to Ethernet boxes this may be 5500 or 7000 that's what we see here and all that we understand uh, we need to understand from this diagram is our access layer is extended now what else we see what else we understand from this diagram what all what are the things that we understand i see that there are two physical nicots so this is the diagram that you will this is the diagram that you will see when you when you have a vm up and running when we when we have multiple uh, port groups when we have multiple port groups these two indicates port group there are two port groups created and we got multiple vm missions uh, this all tells that i have 6 7 vm missions 6 v, 7 vm missions and I got two port groups in this diagram. This is a picture representation as we start configuring VMware with VM machines and uh, uh, physical NIC cards. This is to confirm that whatever we configure is already taking place. So this is how the virtual access layer looks like. You have a switch and you have uh, the physical NIC cards. And here if we have VNIX, the virtual NIC cards. Uh, anyone wants to ask anything? Correct. Uh, yeah this each correct each of this one that you see ad server dhcp server these are all vm machines this is the v switch that you got out of esxi uh, uh, which is there running inside your workstation this is the base this is the base which provides you one v switch by default it will be there v switch uh, it, this is not because of Nexus and we got uh, physical NIC cards and the object groups and then the VMs connected to this V switch. Right, virtual access layer, a series of virtual switches. So we can have multiple virtual switches on a single host. On a single host, you can have multiple virtual switches like virtual switch one, virtual switch two. We can have multiple virtual switches, but not really recommended. We can have if we want. And then uh, on which we can have multiple servers. So these or the VMs servers servers and the network interface residing the these are the network interfaces the physical phys physical NIC cards and virtual NIC cards uh, 
network interfaces residing inside the VMware ESXi host. Now, why do we need this 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 physical NIC card? If I want to talk to the outside world, I need this VNIC card, um, VM NIC card. I need this physical card, not only to the internet, even if I want to talk to another ESXi server where there is some VM machines, VMwares, in order to talk between VMs, I need this physical physical network interface card. When we have physical... Net Mm. Yes, yes, yes. So we got another host and where we have finance and we got here which one the you said some file server, right? Let's say this file server wants to access this finance. It, uh, it passes through this virtual switch, goes out through the physical and it talks to this VM. That is possible. Now, if I don't want any any of my VM machines talk to external world, then I need not to install any physical adapter. I need not to map any physical adapter. If I don't map this, then these machines can talk each other, but they cannot talk to anyone outside. Yes, definitely we can have a different port group and that port group members will not be mapped to this physical uh, NIC card. It can be done. But those things, I, I, I'm not sure whether it is possible without Nexus 1000V. Uh, with Nexus 1000V, it is possible. So the extended network, the features are they, they provide a layer to Ethernet switching here virtually and even through VLANs we can segment. See, th when we have VLANs, why do we need to have multiple V switches in a, in a single host? Not necessary. Even though there are, there, there, there is an option to have virtual switches inside one physical host you need not to do that. Why? Okay, I'll, I'll explain you. Okay. So now we, we got a physical box. A physical host inside which with the help of ESXi uh, we can have multiple switches switch 0 switch 1 switch 2 but this is not really recommended now who will buy multiple switches uh, in order to provide security those who don't know what VLAN is only they will have a separate separate switch for each department, for each subnet, when there are multiple ports available in a physical world. In a physical network world, those who don't know what VLAN is, they will buy many number of switches and they will do many cabling, separate separate cablings for each department to provide security. It's the same case here. Only those who don't know what VLAN is, they need to create multiple virtual switches inside one single host. Otherwise, you, you can have VLANs. With VLANs, you need not to have multiple switches. We can have only one single switch and have any number of, uh, means, you know, the allowed, the maximum allowed number of VMs. And we, in order to provide security, we can put 
virtual machines in different different VLAN so that they won't interact each other. So instead of going for multiple switch, go for single switch. Then how will I so, uh, how will I keep the traffic separate from one machine to one VM machine to another VM machine? VLANs. I can put this one in one VLAN and this one in another VLAN and this one in another VLAN and this one in another VLAN and these four will not talk each other. This is in VLAN 10, this is in VLAN 20, uh, 30 and 40. If I want one of this machine to talk, uh, to VLAN 10 then I'll put this one also in VLAN 10 so that these two will talk each other. So to provide security I need not to put them in different B switches. V switches are byproduct of ESXi. It comes along with ESXi. It comes along with VMware. It is not a, it's not an excess one. Anything else you want to ask uh, Parna to understand better? So here we see that um, a layer 2 Ethernet switching we get, we can segment ports by using port groups. We can, we can group these two as one VLAN and we can put this in a, div a separate VLAN, these two in one VLAN with the help of port group, port profile we will be creating and then uh, we can put them in port group okay when i talk about port group it is vmware level when we talk about port group in nexus we call this port profile with the help of port profile we create port group and we push the port group from vsm to vem and we this is the this is the icon that you will get for port groups and we can map this vm machines to various port groups all that you need to do is you need to right click the VM machine that you have, virtual machine that you have, you need to right click the VM machine and then you will have uh, I think uh, properties, when you click on properties you will have uh, a network card, when you click on network card there will be a drop down menu, you will see a lot of port groups, when you pick one of the port group that belong to VLAN 10 then this machine, VM machine also will become member of VLAN 10. And outboard rate limiting is there by default on VMware. Only inbound, uh, it's not there for outbound. There is a late re uh, rate limit. Next is uh, V switches are composed of uh, virtual ports associated with the physical and the virtual NIC cards. So what is VNIC? This one. This is VNIC, the virtual NIC cards. This is the physical one. We call it as VMNIC. VMNIC. This we call it as VNIC. The outbound traffic is load balanced across the available physical network. Um, so it depends. It depends. There are uh, there are some options in VMware where like you can have active standby or active active. If you make it as active active then both these physical cards will be active and you can do load balancing based on source IP address, based on source port number, based on source MAC address. Uh, same like a, a physical switch. Same as we do in a physical switch you can also do load balancing you remember when we do ether channel we can do load balancing based on the source IP address or source and destination MAC address likewise here we can also do load balancing based on source port number or MAC address or IP address so outbound traffic is load balanced across the available physical network interface card called NIC cards multiple V switches can be configured on a single host single server the v switch consists of some of the advanced functionalities like you know though though we don't have nexus 1000v though it is vmware still it supports 
uh, CB, uh, Cisco Discovery Protocol. We should just contain same uh, advertised functionalities like CDP, outbound traffic shaping. All these are there by default on V switches, not given through Cisco, Cisco Nexus, Nexus 1000V. This is there by default on V switches. This V switches can be identified by CDP. Now, V switches can be configured without, with with no outbound interface to restrict external communication. We already discussed this. If you don't put any NIC card as a, if you don't map any NIC card to the V switch, then the V machine VM VMs will not talk to anyone outside. Internally, they can talk each other. VMs can talk each other. 802.1Q means trunk is supported, which carries multiple VLAN. So if I have this one in VLAN 1 and this one in VLAN 2 and 3 and 4, if they want to talk outside, definitely they need to go through this physical card. So from hypervisor or from vSwitch, the link that connects to the physical port needs to be a trunk port here it will be access because it's a member of single VLAN one two three four since it, this one carries the traffic from one two three four it needs to be trunk so trunk is supported on V switch we should just contain one or more compatible port groups used uh, for VM communication and uh, communication between there are three port groups mandate in order to install 1000 v or in order to install v switch successfully there are three port groups mandate one is for vm communication for this vm machines to talk each other for the data to go in next one to communicate to the kernel and from from kernel to the physical network we need this one that's a kind of control traffic next one is the management traffic so these are the three port groups that is mandate in order to have a proper uh, v switch configuration now each port group must belong to a single vlan their traffic need to be separate separate the traffic that is going between kernel and the physical network and the traffic that is for the management and the traffic that is uh, sent between VMs, they all need to be in separate, separate VLAN. That's recommended. So, uh, how do we do this? How we, we should just have created? They're just there when we, when we install VMware ESXi. So, configure and manage in a software by VMware administrator, not really done by a network admin, taken care by VM administrator. Now, uh, in vSwitch, switches are configured separately. Meaning, if I have two hosts, then I have two vSwitches. I need to configure this separate separately. There is no uh, a centralized control. We don't have centralized control. We don't have centralized configuration like I do configuration here and it get configured on all the host. There is nothing like that. Uh, why we see here like uh, why we why do we see this point here? Because there is going to be something called distributed switch coming next, where we will have centralized uh, controlled uh, controlling device which controls all the switches. So there will be a consistency in the configuration. This is just simply a traditional switch, traditional virtual switch or standard virtual switch wherein we need to do configuration on each VMware host separate separately. Now port groups with the help of port groups, 
uh, we can figure the virtual switches and port groups helps to keep the traffic separately traffic coming from kernel traffic coming from the uh, from the vm machines traffic that is that is for the management purpose all these are kept separate separately with the help of vlan that's what we know now where you will apply the vlan we apply the vlan on a port group so with the help of port group only we can we can we can put different uh, traffic on different vlan and this is done by a vm administrator or a server administrator so it is with the help of port group uh, we can we can do these things like you know keeping traffic separate separate providing quality of service and many more things like port security and many more things can be done only with the help of port groups uh, on the physical switches we used to do all configuration on the physical interface itself because we do not have physical interface here uh, we need to depend on port groups based on port groups the vlan assignment and many more things can be done here right this this picture shows you know how the port group can be created uh, give a, we give a name and then we give a uh, vlan id a detailed you know study about this thing configuration we'll be seeing later but here this somehow you know it gives you anyway it is a graphical user interface when you click you can see these things very clearly actually before you get this window we will have a tab called network when we click on network there will be a small link called properties when you click on properties we'll get this one now under general you you got this port group we can give we can we can give any name to identify the port group and then we can provide a vlan number here uh, for the port group network policies such as vlan traffic shaping rate limiting and uh, are typically designed by uh, a team or configured by vmware server and vm or server team so this this is taken care by vmware server uh, administrator um, and what they do with the help of port port grouping is they can uh, they assign vlans they do traffic shaping they do rate limiting port groups helps to do vlan assigning traffic shaping which is quality of service rate limit that is also a kind of quality of service. Virtual switches are created inside the VMs, uh, inside each VMware ESXA host, and managed, uh, uh, managed, and managed as separate virtual networks. So this is the old story actually. When we have only V switch, which is a standard switch, each ESXA will have separate separate switches. V switches and each should be managed and uh, controlled, managed, maintained by separate, um, separate, separately. They cannot be managed or by by group. Why do they say this? They say this because there is another another switch coming up next after a few more slides called VDS, virtual distributed switch, where we need not to configure separately. Like this, see, there are three error marks. This is configured separately, this is configured separately, this is configured separately. Same way, managed separately. We need not to do that. Uh, we can have a centralized control where we can manage centrally. So here again, another thing that what we see is administration boundary. In, in the normal V switch, the network administrator has no visibility to the southbound they cannot see this VMs only a server team need to do all network related uh, job they need to put in VLANs these are all too much burden for a network admin uh, sorry server admin so in 1000 V what we get is everything we do here 
And all this guy need to do is just map the profile that we give, the port groups that we give. We do all VLAN, quality of service, private VLAN, everything uh, uh, with, a, um, with the help of 5000 or by using Next 1000, Nexus Supervisor Engine. And we create a lot of port groups. All this guy need to do is just map the port group to the interface. That's the advantage of 1000V. So, this is again another important foundational page where, same like a normal switch, V switches also learn MAC address and forwards frames based on layer 2 information called MAC address. And they also meet in MAC table. So, supports internal switching for VMs. Uh, for each uh, VMs, there, uh, there is a separate MAC address and they are maintained, they are managed, they are saved in MAC table. But not for the MAC address that is coming from outside. So, can tag frames with a VLAN ID using 802.1Q if it needs to send it via trunk port? it can send so trunking is supported and this can also support load balancing how when we have active active NIC teaming so when you group these two NIC cards load can be balanced so the traffic coming from here here and here need not to go on one single card it can be load balanced one at a time Configuration limits multiple V switches per VM, v, uh, per VM ESXA host. We can have multiple switches, and each switch can support up to 1016 virtual ports per V switch. And each ESXA host or each VM um, V switch, each V switch can have. 32 VMs, VM NICs, 32 VM NICs, it's really very big. So, one host, one physical box, computer, one server, can have 32 NIC cards connected to one virtual switch, And this one virtual switch can be connected to 1016 VMs. 1016 VMs. It's really big. Again, we can have multiple V switches. I don't think it will be really necessary. Now, internally to identify uh, the traffic coming from this VM machine, this VM machine, this VM machine, they have a special address called uh, UUID. This is called UUID. This U UUID we need not to bother, we need to worry about. These are automatically generated and are being used between the physical NIC and the BNICs. Virtual switch MAC address record um, the MAC address and the port number for VMs. The frames to unknown MAC address are forwarded to the physical NIC. As I already told you, the, it, the MAC address table will not maintain MAC address for the external hosts. Only with the MAC address for the internal VMs it will maintain. So all the unknown MAC address means they, are, they belong to external. All, they have only one gateway to send it out, the layer 2 gateway, that is NIC card. It sends through a NIC card out. There is no broadcasting needed here. How the loop is prevented? When, when I'm going to have multiple links, I'm sorry, multiple NIC cards, physical NIC cards, won't there be a loop? No, there won't be a loop. Which means... Are they going to participate in STP? 
No, they do not even participate in STP. Then how they prevent loop? This is how. One will be active, the other will be passive, so there won't be a loop. Even if both are active, even if both are active, the VM will utilize only one uplink at a given time. That makes sense. So at a given time, only one is going to be active out of this two and that one will be used so there won't be a loop. We should do not flood frame to available uplinks. If the destination is an unknown, a normal switch will flood the traffic. This will not flood traffic. We should just cannot be connected to one another. We should just cannot be connected to one another. Two port types or support. So we should just, they, they cannot talk each other without any uh, support of uh, NIC cards. Either V NIC or VM NIC. So let's say this is one V switch, switch zero, and this is switch one. And there's a host here and there's a host here. If these two need to talk, they cannot talk each other uh, unless and until there is some sort of connectivity between this physical or virtually. Right. Uh, what is NIC teaming? NIC teaming is nothing but grouping of uh, NIC cards or NIC teaming. In our network world, we call it as Ether channel. We do it here, Ether channel. If it is done on the server side, it is called as NIC teaming. VMware leverages NIC teaming for physical NIC in order to provide fault tolerance. If one goes down, still we are up and running for fault tolerance, not only that, for performance, meaning for load balancing. VMware driver and software provides NIC teaming functionality. So NIC teaming can be done with the help of VMware. If you are not doing there, you can also do it on the next uh, Cisco switches using uh, channel group, port group, no, sorry, port channel. So. If, if if you want to do port channel on the server side, we call it as NIC teaming. VMware software supports it. With the help of VMware, we can do it using that GUI. So there is no need of a third party software needed. If you want to have the third party software, even for that, there is a third party software available to do NIC teaming, but it's not necessary. It is already there by default on VMware. So two uh, two teaming configuration types. One is um, I can group this and make one as active and another one as passive or standby. Or I can do both active for load balancing. Now when we, when we make both active, load balancing can be done based on port ID or MAC address or by the IP address. Anyone, based on anyone. Now VLAN tagging, this is again another interesting stuff. There are three different types of VLAN tagging available. One is EST. EST is nothing but external switch tagging in which no VLANs will be tagged by this vSwitch. vSwitch will not do any VLAN tag when it sends the packet out, when it sends the frame out. The frames are left untagged and they are tagged only by the physical device that is there outside. So tagging is not done means then it is tagging is not done on the on the server then it is EST. Next is VGT. The operating system, the VMware itself tags and sends the packet the VMware, the VM machines, they, before sending the traffic, they tag the packet and send. Then it is VGT. Next one is recommended one. What is that? V switch tags the frame. The first one, V switch don't tag. 
we miss vm don't tag who tags the external boxes tags and send the traffic in our external box tags and sends it somewhere then next is we switch don't tag external box don't tag but vm itself tags and sends it the third option is the v switch is tagging not the external or vm now we should security so there is a mode called prometheus see these are all the options that you have in vmware guis when you say prometheus for so what it means actually there is a default one what it means it prevents vms from seeing unicast traffic not intended for that particular port meaning now this is sending a traffic to this when A is sending traffic to C. The Prometheus makes sure that only C receives the packet. B should not see the packet. It will not see because the default mode is Prometheus. When traffic is intended to C, only C receives it. Only C is able C able to see that particular frame. Next is MAC address change lockdown. so this is one security feature when a sends to c only it is received by c not by not by anyone else any questions all right so next one is mac address change lockdown meaning because this is a vmware any point of time anyone can change the mac address but if you enable this option mac address cannot be changed it prevents vm from changing their own mac address so that is again another security in we switch the third one is frog to transmit blocking meaning if it if it finds that a frame is coming from uh, uh, some other node it prevents the it, it prevents vm from sending frame that appears to come from other node on the network So these are the three um, security features that is supported in Wish. Which one is Prometheus? It it makes sure that the packet is delivered or seen only by the intended destination. The other one is the MAC address lockdown, meaning uh, MAC address cannot be changed at any point of time. It is hard coded. The third one is it will not forward the packet or it will not. use the packet if it is coming from some other node all right so to to manage we have three different uh, uh, approach one is through we center we can control uh, multiple hosts and we can we can we can not not only manage we can also configure uh, we can do a lot of uh, supporting uh, job with the help of v center person sitting here what do we see here the, the green lines this green lines means this this guy can uh, talk to the vmware um server and he can control and next is web server web, web client web client is the one who 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 creates this host who manages and all the stuff with the help of a web browser other than the gui that we have the other one is the shell with the help of uh, you know uh, ssh or yeah here it is mentioned uh, with the help of ssh he can tell it to the linux a console of a vspear server and where he gets he gains control over his vm machines this is how the vm can be managed one is through vcenter a gui 
the other through a web client software, the other through the SSH to the Linux machine. Now this talks about the Actually, these things are coming from uh, uh, Cisco switch. What it says is the upstream port, which is a Cisco box, upstream port of a Cisco should be configured with the following. It needs to have a trunk and uh, dot one queue need to be enabled. And if necessary, uh, port security but not recommended all the time. The reason is sometimes VM machines may generate more number of MAC address than the VMs. If I have 10 VMs, I may sometimes have 11 MAC address. So if I have a port security, it may sometimes shut down my uh, physical ports. So port security, uh, you need to be cautious when we enable it. Port fast can be enabled so that there won't be a waiting time when a network conversion happens. So here we see there are two switches, V switch one and V switch two. And there are two port groups here, and there is one port group here. And these are all physical NICs. See this big num nick number zero, one, three, four, five, six. So what do we understand from this? This is not two different hosts. This is a single host. This is a single server, in which we have multiple V switches. And V switch one and V switch zero. In V switch one alone, we have uh, this many VMs. They are connected to a profile called a port group called VM network. VM network is the one, uh, the port group that we create for, for the traffic that is running between the VMs. For the traffic that is going between the VMs, we create a, we, we create a port group called a VM network. There is another port group called a service console which can be used for uh, for you know for ssh for for taking control over that machine using linux cli this vm network profile is for the data communication between the v machines vms and then the service console is for uh, the kernel to use To doing to do V motions and so on. V motion is nothing but moving mission, moving, moving one of our VM from one uh, ESXi host to another ESXi host. That is possible only when we have VDS, virtual distributed switch, or when we have 1000V. 1000V works along with VDS. Then also you'll have V motion. Without 1000V also we have vMotion. Uh, that is very, very, very simple. We just right click one of our VMs and then we move to another server from one server. Practically it is easy, but to understand because we have seen, we have, you have not seen before, we have not seen before, uh, we may feel like tough. It's not really tough. vMotion is very, very simple. Like you need to, all that you need to do is just right click this. And then uh, you move it, you will have an option, all the clustered ESXA host, you move it to one of the hosts that you want to move. So to do that, we need a separate, uh, um, what to say, separate uh, channel, separate VLAN, so the traffic will be kept uh, separate, handled separate. Uh, for that, we, we have a separate uh, port group. V switch configuration option switch can be configured with zero NIC card 
or up to 30 to nic which we already discussed sometime before we saw we can have up to 32 vm nics per esxi vmware nic theming is used to load balance traffic across the available uplink internal only v switch can be used for testing and traffic isolation so why someone will put no nic cards why someone will not use any nic card that is for uh, internal testing they do not want uh, the testing that they do inside to imp to make an impact outside so they want to they want an isolated network so what they do they they do not assign any physical nic card to the v switch so that whatever they do here it is local it won't go outside like this We may have physical nick card, but we are not mapping it. That's it. One physical nick card cannot be mapped to e is no. It is possible to map one physical nick card to multiple. Uh, VDS virtual distributed switch. No, 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 no. You know, virtual distributed switch is nothing but grouping. Yeah, uh, it is possible. There is something called adapter fix, but I don't know whether VMware uh, uh, supports it. But there is a concept called adapter fix. Uh, in in that you know in Nexus it is possible. In Nexus world we have the concept. I need to check with VM. I'm not sure. All right now what we see here is i want a firewall in vm world you know i have vm missions vm missions vm mission vm mission and i got a physical nic card i want a firewall is it possible yes i can have a firewall all that i need is i, I want the firewall to be an application that can be installed so uh, even in you know, a virtual uh, ASA 1000 V is available I run on one of the VMware and I make all the traffic to pass through this ASA box how it is possible this is possible how you know I don't provide any v, uh, any physical NIC card to this switch I create two switches this is switch 0 this is switch 1 and I have one VM as a member of both the switch. So any traffic that is going out, I map it to this interface. So it goes out like this, pass through the firewall, and firewall approves it, goes out. Likewise, any traffic coming from outside comes through the firewall, come to the firewall. When firewall permits it, comes here like this. So this is one place where we can have two switches, but why do you need this if you know how to use VLANs proper? Not necessary if we know VLAN. So this is also an option. Software firewall applications and routers can be used within VM. We can have a layer three, we can have a firewall, device within vm because we got a software solution for that software firewall applications and route can be used within a vm uh, to create security internal network or uh, to demilitarize zone what is demilitarize zone demilitarize zone is nothing but the place where public as well as private meets it belongs to private but shared with public something like that so when we when we need this this is also allowed in vm so that's what we you know whatever i explained in the previous slide you see that same thing here i got two switches switch zero and switch one this is switch zero and this is switch one 
and the switch one has got a VM called a firewall. I I see the same firewall here, the VM. And uh, there is no uh, physical adapter here. There is physical adapter here. This is a logical flow. Now, VMware Advanced Functionality Record Layer 2 Adjacency for VM Kernel Port. Now, when we when we have multiple virtual switches, they need to have an adjacency so that we can do V motion. If one one switch knows about the other switch, then V motion is possible. See, these are all VM machines. Maybe let's assume this is physical box. These are all physical switches. And uh, we got mul redundant links connecting to multiple switches so that if one goes down, the other will be back up. And we got a vCenter to control them. Now this is a bit confusing. Actually this this should be a software switch, V switch. And this V switch should be adjacent to each other so that if one fails, the other will be back up. There will be high availability. Not only that V motion is possible, uh, a VM machine from one physical box to the other physical box can be easily moved. Even if it is a hardware box, still there is a need for adjacency so that one VM from one host can be moved to the other VM. It cannot just fly like that anyway, it has to go through a physical box. And it has to go through an external connection. So this should be a physical switch. Physical switch, when we, only when we have physical switch, uh, this is possible. V motion, high availability, how you got multiple physical switches distributed resource a scheduler can work properly only when we have uh, adjacency between the layer 2 boxes that is connecting these VMs now here comes the um, barrier breaker meaning that we have something called distributed virtual switch DVS with the help of DVS what we can do is we can have a centralized control over all this ESXi a centralized control over all this ESXi so through this I can see all this ESXi as a big hardware pool on top of which all these VM machines are sitting. This distributed virtual switch takes care of managing, configuring, maintaining these V switches. <coughs> all that we do is we just do configuration here. This takes care of the other device, other, other individual V switch configurations. Now to have Cisco Nexus 1000V, this is very important distributed virtual switch is very important so configuration see as the diagram shows I, I think you remember the previous diagram we were having separate separate switches and separate separate configurations for each V switches now we got a distributed virtual switch single point control with the help of vCenter Simplified network management because it is centralized. So removes the requirement of host level network configuration. So we we don't do host level configuration. We don't go to this host separately, this separately, and this separately and configure. We just do in one single point, centralized. Statistics and policies follows the VM. 
as we already discussed in some in previous class as we move the vm from one mesh one one physical host to the other physical host you are not going to lose any policy or quality of service related features why because the vm is binded with the policy when i move the when i move this vm from this physical machine to this physical machine i i do not lose anything maybe one or two packet may get lost because i'm moving v motion is in in impact is in place i may move i may i may lose one or two packets not more than that other things are still working everything will be going on same as usual as we had here same uh, policies quality of service and everything is same so what what distributed virtual switch provides is it provides a, a a pool on which all these vms are working so this is what this is what we get as the final output when we don't have distributed virtual switch we need to manage each host separate separately when we have distributed virtual switch a single point all that we had here we get in a single point a centralized management a consistent configuration right now what are what are what are the new things that we have because of vds one is the centralized management next one is port state migration we get when we when we migrate um a vm from one one workstation to the other workstation in a cluster we don't lose any policy related stuff rate limiting for receiving traffic as well but in the, the previous case in the switch we got, we had rate limit only for the transmitting for the traffic that is sending sent out now even for receiving we have the rate limit we can have we can have private vlan now which was not there before we had only one option called prometheus now with this we can have isolate community as well so virtual switch and vds which virtual switches and distributed virtual switch or not manually or or not mutually exclusive physical nic physical nic ports are assigned to either vr switch or distributed virtual switch separate ports can be assigned to vr switch and distributed virtual switch on the same vm asx host what it means is we can have vr switch as well as distributed virtual switch parallelly working parallelly working on a single host we can have both D vds sorry dvs distributed virtual switch as well as the vr switch uh, parallelly in a single host at a time no it's as you said in the in the first uh, portion of what you said now you know it's it's it, it helps to combine multiple v switches together but it is if you don't have multiple switches still vds is, still dvs is dvs it is there ready to make multiple switches in cluster if you don't have multiple switch then it is like one to one you do, you still have v uh, v switch you still have dvs it doesn't mean that because i don't have multiple switches it doesn't mean that i don't have vd uh, i don't have dvs i have got dvs 
So when we enable ESXi, uh, we have DVS by default getting installed. This is you know not that much. It's quite confusing. It's not really needed. Yes, tell me. Um, first place DVS will not go down. Um, next is what is that? Um, what did you ask? The answer I can say is DVS will not go down. Uh, then every even VM will crash. The entire VM will crash. If DVS goes down, then there is no VM also. Only when VM VMware uh, the the complete uh, what to say the tool goes down, your DVS also goes down. It's a part of ESXi. Right, so this chapter uh, gave us an introduction, uh, not only introduction, a detailed study about uh, the traditional standard virtual switch as well as the distributed switch. The next chapter is about uh, Cisco Nexus 1000V. So in Cisco Nexus 1000V, what we get is some added advantage like uh, this, these are all were there before, Pre private VLAN was there, uh, VLAN was there, now we got ACL port security even ACL redirect NetFlow was there already um, now we got quality of service we can we can do DSCP differentiated service code point or class of service we can have switch port analyzer span what it is uh, we can we can redirect some packets we can mirror some traffic to an analyzing engine and see what traffic is coming in and going out. In order to do the auditing job, analyzing job, uh, we do spanning. Now these are the things that we used to normally do on a physical switch. Now all those things are possible because of 1000V which was not there available for, which was not there available uh, when we, when we were having simply be the uh, distributed virtual switch or a uh, v switch so now we got a policy network policies and securities on a virtual network which is also mobile which was already there but this this time who is going to do this it's a network engineer all that you saw in the previous chapters though you may had some vlans some quality of service related stuff like private VLAN and so on, like security stuff, all those things were taken care by the VM admin or the system admin, which they were really struggling without understanding what they do, they used to do, because those those jobs were our job, networking job. Now, uh, creating policies, port profiles, all those things are done now by us. And we can do all this with the help of port profile or uh, to say you know in, in a clear picture port group port groups are created with the help of port profile so in a port group all this can be achieved we can put inside the port group and we can give it to this ESX or ESXi and then what simply this admin comes, the VM admin comes and says, okay, this VM machine, I want it to be in VLAN 10. Which port group supports it? Okay, that port group. Let me bind it to that. That's all he does. So it things made more easy now. So maintaining uh, uh, this 1000V is the one which is going to help us create all this. Not only that, it helps to maintain policies for multiple VMs when when we migrate using VM motion still they are maintained those things are taken care by 
supervisor module vsm cisco nexus 1000 v brings hardware based level hardware based level vm level granularity <coughs> so whatever you do on a physical switch we can do now on a vm virtual switch with the help of v em and vsm now on a physical switch we had this we have this two component one for the control plane and for the management plane the control plane we called as vsm sorry control plane and management plane both together we called as vsm and then uh, the vems ethernet module so this was this was there even on the physical switch on the physical switch we had supervisor module we had ethernet module ethernet module or the one which works on the line cards supervisor module or the one which controls those line cards now we got this in a virtual level without losing any uh, without compromising any any sort of security or poll quality or any policy related stuff cisco nexus 1000 v enables policy based vm connectivity mobility of network and security properties non disruptive operational mode module now what is this policy based vm connectivity you all, we already know what it is we create port policies port profiles and we bind it to vms mobility of network v motion we know security we can have cisco nexus 1000 v sorry asa 1000 v or we can have acl as we saw in the previous slide we can have private vlan we can have acl redirect we can have port security non 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 disruptive operational module meaning um, we we have a non disruptive operational this may be a bit earlier but you can still definitely un understand what i'm coming to say now we have vsm vsm is the one which controls vem now in the above diagram how many vem you got i got one vem here one vm for this server for each physical host i got separate vems now to control these three VMs, how many VSM I have? I have only one VSM. I can I have only one VSM. That VSM can be one of this VM machine. Can be on a separate host like this. Now, who controls? Who manages? It is VSM, the one who controls this VMs. Actually, here VM is written. VM is written here. VM. It is VM the one which controls. Now, what if this goes down? Will the traffic still pass as usual? Yes. Non disruptive operational model. When this model goes down, the traffic that was already going data plane is not going to get disturbed when this control plane goes down data plane is still forwarding the traffic non disruptive operational model all right so what we get is we get a centralized Disturb. Well said. Now, <laughs> now it's very very nice uh, thought. Now, how we will come to know that VSM has gone down? Uh, uh, CDP can discover it. You know the physical box that is here. When you go and say show CDP neighbor, you will not find this guy. Why you know CDP won't talk to VEMs directly; they only talk to VSM. Now that is one thing that you can uh, you, through that you can come to know. Uh, there are other things like um, when some traffic tries to do something, uh, they need some help of uh, supervisor 
module in in that case those those functions will not happen then you can come to know that uh, or let's say there is a policy change the policy change will not take effect because there is no control plane now that's why you know we will have two vsms you know what here we are coming to say is it is non disruptive even if one vsm goes down you can have another vsm to back up it will not it will it is not going to affect the traffic even if you don't have another vsm it is not going to affect the traffic uh, for a point of time when when something necessary for management and control plane to interfere uh, till the time the traffic will not get disturbed data plane will be smooth if some request comes from outside which may makes this vm to request the control plane to take decision only then the problem starts no uh, no no <laughs> it will not affect the data flow that is going um from vms the data plane will be up and running so what we get is we get a centralized control plane architecture we uh, see there is a centralized control plane architecture this is what we called a supervisor module vsm which has got multiple data planes each data plane is a separate esxi so this is the uh, picture we we get when we have nexus vmware esxi server cluster module is a single cisco nexus switch one nexus control plane and ma control manage manage multiple uh, data planes in a cluster one data plane per vm so this is one vm asxi this is one v uh, vmware asxi so each is one data plane likewise we can have 32 data planes controlled by one vsm now this vm is one of the server in the cluster it can be one of the vm machine as i already told this vsm can be one of the vm machine or it can be a separate hardware box as we as we discussed in the beginning before we started this class it can be a separate box now if it is a if it is a if it is a if it is vm then we call it as control plane virtual application i guess so yes it should be like the control plane virtual application control plane physical application the a physical appliance connecting to an upstream switch so uh, if i have a physical box as a supervisor engine then it is called cpp a control plane physical appliance if i have a virtual box like if my one of my vm is acting as a vsm then we call it as control plane virtual appliance a virtual application cpva and cppa okay cisco nexus 1000v vsm operation as we already saw uh, vsm is a software appliance can run on a physical server or it can be on a virtual server if it is running on a physical server then it is control plane physical appliance if it is running on a virtual server it is control plane virtual appliance application application or appliance i need to check it should be application two vsms can run in a redundant uh, setup we can have multiple vsms for redundancy for high availability vsm is a supervisor module 
for uh, VEMs. VEMs are like a switch line cards. VSM fail will not cause failure in the data path, which we already discussed. The traffic will continue to forward the packet that is sent through VEMs. Each VEM is assigned by a by a, by a physical uh, by a virtual port on a VEM, and the VEM acts as a line card to VSM. So where do we connect our VMs? We connect to our VEMs. VEMs. These VEMs are managed by VSM. So each VEM is like a line card on a, a switch. So when we go to Nexus 1000V and type this command show interface VETH, you can see this first mission. So when I say VETH 9, I can see this mission. I can also see what name is given for the VM, what name, and on which module it runs, module number 3. Now from this what I understand is, when I see module number 3, what happened to module number 1 and 2? 1 and 2 is what VSM. Now this VSM is running on a virtual machine. For control and management, two modules are already taken. And third module, from third module onwards, VSM, I see here. And it is running on Nexus 1000V. Distributed virtual port number 1. As I already told, Nexus 1000V depends on DVS, Distributed Virtual Switch. The port profile that is binded, this is the name, user-defined name, created by us in Nexus 1000V environment. And this is what binded to this machine, VM machine. Because of this reason, if I move this VM machine, the VM into some other hardware, still I don't lose any policy. Why? This port profile is binded to this VM. And the mode on this interface is access. So whenever, wherever this PC connects, it's an access mode. So all this, even the access mode, trunk mode, all this we, we, we put where? No, we put it inside the profile. Port profile. VLAN Right So here what we see is traffic flow Okay, this is quite interesting We got VMs Now these VMs are connected to Nexus 1000V as well as it is connected to B SCSI hard disk, virtual disks, and that is given to hypervisor. Now hypervisor uh, has shared this B SCSI to VMs, and this VMs also connected to Nexus 1000V, and we got the hypervisor. Now when the traffic, when the data comes to the Nexus 1000V, what it does is, it gives the data to the hypervisor and hypervisor gives the data to VMNIC and VMNIC gives to the, sorry, the VNIC gives to VMNIC and this ASIC, this is, this is a code, this is actually a code and there is a name for this, wait, okay, here it is. It is called Menlo ASIC. This is actually name of a park, uh, uh, IT park. This is a chip actually. So this is one single card which has got capability of both HPA as well as uh, the data. Need not to be always Intel. Uh, it can it can take the traffic Ethernet traffic. 
it can also take the uh, fiber optic step traffic so what this this A asic does is it it identifies what the traffic to be it if it is a if it is a land traffic it sends to the lan if it is um, storage traffic then it encapsulates it with fc oe and sends it out and san what it does is it removes back it it sends the fc alone to the storage it decapsulates the ethernet more ethernet uh, when it sends to storage device So let me repeat what's happening here. We got VMs. Now these VMs are used to access data as well as sorry to 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 get some service out of this VM machine. Not only to that to access some data from the storage. Now when uh, when a traffic when a request is made from LAN, it is given to LAN by this uh, card it identifies which traffic should go to a ethernet segment and which traffic goes to SAN segment storage area network segment and before sending to a storage area network what it does is it does FCOE fiber channel over ethernet so that it can use the ethernet cables and go to this storage area network on the storage area network on the receiving side on the target only FC will be sent decapsulation happens right this is an uh, outline architecture we have VMs right from 1 to n number of VMs and to control it, we have a VSM, Nexus OS. It's so a controlling one. We got VNIX. And then we got VMNIX. This is all controlled by ESXi. Now VM connectivity, now this picture is very important. You see this V center can talk to everyone. The red line you see, it goes to everyone. It goes to VSM, it goes to VM. It goes to everyone. And this is one separate hardware for a host, this is a separate host. And this dotted line you see control control it goes it goes between vsm and vem that's all it is between vsm and vem now the packet is also between vsm and vem now what is the difference between control and packet packet as well as control it goes between VSM and VM. Then what is the difference between this packet and the control? The control traffics are like CDP traffics. This packet types are like the sorry, I'm I'm saying opposite. The control traffics are like VSM managing and maintaining the VEMs those traffics are control traffics those management traffics this packet traffics are like CDP Cisco discovery protocol as I already told you when a CDP comes only VSM can talk to that CDP neighbor not the VEMs so it is the VEM which talks between uh, it is it is the VSM which talks to VEM about that CDP so CDP, packet control is the management traffic, means you know it's the management traffic, it's the control and management 
from 1000 not the global management global management is through v center data traffic is nothing but the traffic that is running between vms this is very important part that's why we we will create this three port profiles port groups management control and packet or at least this three control separate packet separate and data separate this for vsm to control vms this is for cdp and so on and this is for data traffic between vms whatever i explain it is explained here for vsm to va vm connectivity to say what vlan they belong to and all the stuff policies profiles and uh, this is for uh, the packet is for cdp between vm and vsm data is for all the traffic that is running between vms and management traffic is an out of band traffic meaning they are they are not going to really influence any vm or vsm but in order to control vsm we have this management it is the v center on which we install this um uh, vsm that v center is the one which which has overall control over all all the traffic any sort of traffic with the nexus or vds or any sort of traffic so they they have um separate name what that's what we see in the diagram here the management can you know from v center it connects to vsm it connects to vms it connects to every nic card v nic card so on. so when i say show cdp neighbor all we see is only one neighbor i don't see multiple neighbors this is this is actually one same name repeated again so single switch from control plane and management plane perspective so if you have multiple vms in this diagram i have two vms am i going to see two cisco nexus box no it's only one this vsm if i have multiple vsm only one will be primary so only one switch one virtual switch so there is a centralized centralized control plane management there will be only one operational single switch so it appears as a single switch to cdp extensible markup language xml and uh, snmp uh, provides presence as a single virtual switch distributed data plane so 